All right. So, just by looking at the cover, what are you thinking about this book? The uncanny uses of urine. Oh, and I so don't have a lot of in bathroom jokes. Bathroom jokes. Well, it's gonna be interesting. Interesting. Maybe what do you think? I think it's gonna be interesting. Stuff that I probably don't, didn't know before. Yeah. Okay, what do you think about it? I think. It's gonna be weird. I think it's gonna be weird too. So, what do you get, even think about the idea of urine of being a useful material resource? Well, I can kind of believe it because I watched this one show where they, in like really poor places, they use their like poop to like generate electricity. Yeah. To the power. So, what are your thoughts about even? Like using urine as something useful. Uh, I think it better not be in food. It better not be in food. Yeah, I I agree. Kaylin, what are your first thoughts about even using it? So just looking at the pictures on the cover, what are do you think these are some some of the ways that the urine is used? Yeah. yeah. The only one I don't understand is this one. Yeah. Are they like launching it or something? <laughs> so you'll find out about that in the in the book. So let's turn to page three. And there's an infographic right here about how the bladder works. What do you think it's trying to show us? I mean, what do you think it's trying to show us? How it yeah. urine generates in the body, yeah. Carter, what do you think? What is it trying to show us? I show you the process of going pee. The process of going pee, okay. So how the subtitle subtitle above it says how urine is made in the body. So I think that's how it's what it's telling us. And so it says the bladder fills more. Bladder muscles relax, sphincter muscles contract and pelvic. Four muscles contract. And then it goes through the two. So that's the first sensation that you have. You have to release it. And then three is the normal desire. So when you really have to go. <laughs> and then voiding. So um, turn to page six and seven. And what, just by looking at the headline title of the of the pages. Historical uses of urine. What do you think you're gonna learn about here? How people have used them. How people used it a very long time ago. Maybe what do you think you're gonna learn about? Um just the weird ways that people can use it. Yeah. So did you ever think about using urine as laundry detergent, teeth whitener, and mouthwash? Ew. Dye Ew. fixer, gunpowder additive. I think that's the one that you were talking yeah. about, Rickon, about the cover. You didn't really know how that would be used. That's something that I was really surprised about. So, uh, out of all of them, I think the like weird like the most normal one is dye fixer. Like, yeah. All the yes. Things. All right. So now that we've talked about this a little bit, and we've talked about how what we think about it, um, 
want you guys to go ahead and just stay here in the room today so I can get this all reviewed. And then we'll come back and talk about it more in depth, okay? <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Alright. I moved freaking to this movie for me, so I'll start at page two where it says need to go. Right here. So you're gonna start at the part where it says suppose your teacher pointed at you one day. Suppose your teacher pointed at you one day in class and asked if you needed to use the bathroom. Other than being mortified, what would you do or say? Likely you would answer likely you would instinctively know the answer. People just know when they have to go. Every human has to go number one, to go number one or pee, at least a few times a day. Most animals pee in some way, shape, or form, too. Pee is scientifically referred to, to as urine, and the process of peeing is urination. As your body performs its various functions, there are wastes that build up in the bloodstream, and your body needs to get rid of these wastes. The kidneys are the organs that filter waste from your blood. Most people have two kidneys that filter at a rate of 120 to 150 quarts, 114 to 132 liters per day, resulting in about two quarts or liters of urine every 24 hours. Thank you.
maybe. So how did your thoughts change? Um, that it's actually like really useful. Well, they said in the future it could be used to charge phones. It could be used to charge phones. Now that's a step. Huh? Why might the author have chosen to write about this topic? What would be so important about it? Um, hmm. Well, people probably never knew about this stuff. I yeah. never knew it. So it's that is the author. Thought people get really interested in it and like the book. Yeah. Okay, what do you think? Why do you think the author wrote about this? Like, what's so important about the topic? I think it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't like do anything with it. No, it helped. Just as you saw, like in the the gunpowder out of it. It um, helped historically back then, and gunpowder is still used today. So it, it, it is used today. People use it for a multitude of things. So, did anything surprise you about the uses that it gave you in, in the book about urine? Teeth whitening. Teeth whitening? What yeah, was so surprising about that, Carter? Make people, make people take urine and then put it back in their body on the opposite end. Yeah. Did it, so what were the details about using it as teeth whitener? What? It said it has good back. It's also made for killing like, bacteria. It's great for killing bacteria. Killing bacteria. So have you ever seen on movies, like cartoon movies, um, where like somebody steps on a sea urchin and they're like, you just pee on it, they'll take the, the toxin down your body. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. So that's one way. So yeah, it has um, chemicals and, and enzymes in it that help with killing bacteria. What do we think about laundry detergent? That was weird. weird. Yeah. yeah, what did you think about this for uh, laundry detergent chemicals? To clean your clothes. I mean, what's it lighter? Yeah. Yes. So it's like. Probably not. Um, so, like, in, back in the, the Roman times, they used urine to white and laundry. So they didn't have bleach back then, so they had to use something, and they found that urine helps. So I want you guys to turn to a page in the book, take me to a page in the book that you thought was really useful. It's one of the uses that was so interesting. <laughs> Again, what was the one that you thought was really interesting? Um, these. All of them? So what about like the gunpowder out of it? That one was like fun to read about. Like these ones are just gross. <laughs> that was yeah. cool how they yeah. I mean, you're not ingesting it, so it's <laughs> it's better wearing it. So I mean, it's not not to it. Yeah, it, didn't, it, did. it didn't talk about like Making clothes with it because Kaylin like she's here. Yeah, them. so she she probably thought about that because it looks like they're making clothes with it, but she was probably talking about like clothing the new American thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the subject actually used it to hide clothes. Yeah, um, so it didn't they talk about it in this, but she has some background knowledge about that. That's awesome. It also they also this um some people also use brains to make their clothes. Like oh yeah, animal Brain. brains. Oh yeah, probably is. That's a specific. That's weird. Very. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna turn to page five. 
where it says what urine can tell your doctor. So sometimes what you have eaten is very apparent in your urine. Certain foods are more extreme than others, such as asparagus. While the mystery of whether or not you ate asparagus may be revealed in the bathroom, this is only a tiny fraction of the information urine provides. A urine sample is like a road map for doctors when they are searching for the root of a medical issue. One simple analysis is to look at the cover of urine. The various colors of urine give clues about a person's hydration level from well hydrated to severely dehydrated, and they can help doctors identify other dietary issues as well. So, what is asparagus? A vegetable. A vegetable. Right. And it says right here in the first couple of sentences that certain foods are more extreme than others, such as asparagus. So, a vegetable, and what do you think it would do to someone's urine? Carter, what do you think it would do Probably. if you eat asparagus? Probably be turn like that. Turn like Okay, so looking at the table over here, it might change its color, right? Yeah. Or it might even make it smell different. It smell weird. Yeah. yeah. It says in the um, 2012 Olympics in London mm -hmm. that some of the Olympic swimmers said they believe that everybody urinates in the pool and the core closes. Yeah. That's yeah, not true. So we have that if, rumor that if that, happens, that it turns the water blue, but no, it doesn't. So, what are you guys? What are your guys' thoughts about using it in the future for generating electricity, powering phones, like Rickon said earlier? I would rather just use a. <laughs> yep. I think I'm with you. Yep. So, even if it was like the big trend. At the beginning, you mentioned something about, and you heard in like um, the older days, they used it to generate, like, they used waste to generate electricity. So, the scientists are actually doing studies about. Um, how they can use urine to generate electricity in the future. What do you What do you think about that? I think that I'd sign up for that job. It's very <laughs> cheap. Yeah, cheap labor. Okay, well, what are your thoughts? What do you think about it being used in the future? Will it be more common? I think it would be more common. Uh, yeah, I feel like some people would still not do it. Yeah. But then, like, at the same time, like, they're, like, going into it and the parents use it. Like, you use it without getting sprayed. Yeah. Off. So, I think it would be more common. They also do, like, tomato plants in the human food. Yeah. Oh, yeah? That's Alright, you guys can go ahead and close your books and it's enough talk about urine today. Yeah. So Too bad we didn't get to number two. I think you guys are going to go do that one another time. Okay. So I have okay. written down. Just look at the first three. What do you see that are similar with these three words? So they all have hydrate in them. Hydrate. Yep, they all have hydrate in them. And if we look at the the prefixes, what does over mean as a prefix? Like, like yeah, too much. So over hydrate means your body has too much hydration. And what does really mean? Again, so rehydrate. So if you become dehydrated, you have to rehydrate. Mm -hmm. And then look at the next three set, uh, next three words. What's the other thing you guys Pack. 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 
So this is just showing you the different prefixes and the suffix that would change the meaning of the word path. Mm -hmm. And that's all I have for today.